original super fun and all about artisan cheese and more to melt your peaceful heart and toast your peaceful life. Coming to you from the Appalachian Mountains of southwestern Virginia, this is the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. Hey, this is Scott Hall from Peaceful Heart Farm, and you are listening to the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. Hello, everybody. Melanie Hall here. Hope you are doing well. The conversation today and every day revolves around the value of tradition. Traditional living, traditional food prep and storage, traditional cooking, and of course, traditional raw milk products and artisan cheese. Topics discussed here are designed to create new perspectives and possibilities for how you might add the taste of tradition to your life. So slow cookers have taken a back seat to Instapot type pressure cookers and air fryers. Uh, But I still use mine. And today's podcast is all about why, when, and how. In fact, I have seven tips on using a traditional slow cooker. I want to take a minute and say welcome to all the new listeners. Welcome back to the veteran homestead loving regulars who stop by the Farmcast every episode. I appreciate you so, so, so much. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas and are set up for a fabulous New Year celebration. We are old fogies and likely won't even stay awake until the ball drops in Times Square. Well, we might be watching Game of Thrones past midnight. You know, I know it's so over, but we listened to the audiobooks ages ago. And I wasn't really impressed with the book, uh, nor the first TV season. Anyway, we... We watched the first season again after years of it sitting on the shelf, uh, and I decided to finish the series. You know, end of year, cleaning up loose ends and such. So we're now watching it after staying away for all those years. I'm still not impressed so far. We're just getting into season three. I'm still not that impressed, but it's okay. Truly, I'm a Wheel of Time fangirl. And I'm anxiously awaiting Amazon's original production uh, beginning in the fall next year. They're filming right now. <clears throat> I'm counting on it, putting Game of Thrones to shame. I have listened to those audiobooks and read those books over and over and over again. Anyway, back to my topic. I'm so excited to share with you what's going on at the farm this week. Let's get to it. We've got some homestead life updates. I've got seven tips for using a traditional slow cooker. And today's recipe is easy barbecued beef. So first of all, um, life is kind of slowed down some here as we get into the winter season. The milking is done. The canning is done uh, for the most part. I will be making bone broth throughout the winter I kind of save up my bones and then make a lot of bone broth and can it and I'm building up my stores of that tasty burst of nutrition that um, bone broth makes Um, but as with any homestead situation stuff is going on year round Um, the goats that's the biggest challenge seems to be anyway keeping them inside the fence one in particular star she's named because she has a she's all black but she has like a spot on her forehead she just seems to go wherever she wants and they all got out a week or so ago Um, scott moved everybody to a different paddock and they found somewhere i guess where the fence wasn't quite as repaired as it needed to be and so one day he's up on top of the creamery out there and he sees them outside the fence all of them huddled together Um, There happened to be an open gate in paddock number seven, and he just kind of walked down the lane, and they went right in there. So so they're in there while the rest of the girls, the cows and the sheep girls, are rotating through the back pastures. Those are number 10 through 14. And Star is with the cows and the sheep. At least the last time we looked, she was there. Um, It's a different day, so who knows? She just... As I said, she just seems to go wherever she wants. Now, the sheep are doing well. And again, we expect our first lambs around the 6th of May. So what do you think about a farm tour in June? The lambs will be really cute at that age. They'll be a month or so old and they they jump 
straight up and down. They're just really cute. The cows are plugging along. Luna is growing like a weed. She is such a beautiful calf. Um, let's see what else. We've received the canister that will house the semen for artificial insemination next season. The boys are slowly getting thinned out. Eventually, we will have only female bovine. I'm looking forward to that day when we have a single herd of cows. Today, we have five cows and Luna, the heifer, that's in one herd. And then two steers and three bulls in another herd. And, you know, the boys are okay, but it's the girls. Claire, Cloud, Buttercup, Violet, Butter, and now Luna that are my treasures. <laughs> The quail, nothing much going on with the quail. They aren't laying any eggs. I'm not looking for any new eggs until spring, March, or maybe even April. So we're talking like three full months before we'll probably start getting any eggs. And then I'm going to start hatching out a bunch of them and, and growing out. Anyway, I'll be practicing next year growing the quail out. Now the creamery, there is some exciting stuff going on there. The roof is going on. It's been months where Scott was working on all of that block work. Um, he's mostly, well, he's got all the blocks in place. There's a lot of fill-in places that he has to do, filling in a lot of cracks. But um, at the moment, he's doing the decking for the attic floor. And then once he completes that part, he'll have a platform where he can build the rafters for the roof. And he, he'll be building them more or less in place. And then once they're all complete, our friend Charles will come over and help him literally raise the roof up. And um, this carpentry is, carpentry is going much faster than the masonry. Scott kind of pointed that out to me, how quickly things look like they go so fast once you get to the carpentry. Carpentry. Now, the garden, even though it's coming into winter, the garden is on my mind because I'm kind of mentally mentally planning it at this point. And sometime in January or February, I'll order the seeds. And um, I had such a good time growing seedlings last spring that I'm actually thinking about growing quite a few more and selling them at the farmer's market. I did sell a few. I don't want to get into too much stuff because, boy, once we start milking and making cheese, I don't have time for, for really for a whole lot of anything else. But we'll see. So I'm, I'm thinking about it. Just a few. And um, I already know I'm going to be growing a lot of peas, beans, and tomatoes because I use a lot of them making meals for the women's homeless shelter. And I'll probably grow squash again. I didn't grow any last year. And peppers. I think I'll grow a variety of peppers again. I didn't grow any peppers last year either. So that's about it for the homestead updates. And let's get on with today's topic. So today, seven tips for using a traditional slow cooker. The slow cooker offers you, the home cook, a way of making fast food. Um, something that you don't have to spend a lot of time in the kitchen with. And while it may cook slowly... It has a fix it and forget it feature that other cooking techniques just really can't match. So once your ingredients are in the cooker, there's no stirring, no fussing, no additional attention necessary for the most part until your dish is ready for the table. And my Kosori pressure cooker comes close, but there are reasons that I still use my traditional slow cooker. You feel free to use either. Most of those uh, multifunction uh, pressure cookers have a slow cooker setting on them, and it will work. It'll work just fine. So what exactly is a slow cooker? Uh, first of all, a slow cooker is a generic term used for an appliance. Um, the company that first designed the slow cooker was Rival, and they named their product the crock pot. So a lot of times people will call it a crock pot. They're one and the same. Um, so let's say features that make a slow cooker or a crock pot are it's a countertop appliance with low and high settings and without a gauge to set a specific temperature. Low, high. Um, the inner container is made from stoneware, ceramic, or heat-resistant glass. It has wraparound heating elements within a, a metal casing 
and this produces indirect heat to the container and that makes for even heating and avoids hot spots and stirring is not required for most dishes and then it has a tight fitting lid to contain the heat and the steam so all of those things in combination are what make it a slow cooker or a crock pot and uh, the combination of low temperature lengthy cooking times and locked in moisture work together to cook food thoroughly it also inhibits the growth of bacteria and eliminates the need for your personal attention during the lengthy cooking process it's just a great great thing now the slow cookers are typically round or some of them are oval and they range in sizes from as small as one quart to as large as seven quarts I don't think I've seen one bigger than seven quarts and depending on your needs it might be useful to have a couple of different sizes um, for me I just have a couple of them that are actually both large five six seven quart ones you might want a smaller one though for side dishes and dips I have a recipe for cheese fondue uh, that's on the website I'll put a link in the show notes for that you might also want a larger one for bigger main meals um, you can allow room to double or triple a dish for larger gatherings or so you can freeze a portion of it for later so there are multiple uses some of the current models have digital features such as an automatic off or a keep warm option most of them actually have um, a keep warm option some of them will automatically turn off and that one allows you to better control how long your dish cooks when you're away from home I want to give a little bit of backstory on on this particular method of cooking and the actual slow cooking with the with the crock pot was introduced in the early 1970s but it's really a modern version of time-honored tradition of braising stewing pot roasting and Dutch oven cooking methods and all of these use long cooking times low temperatures with liquid and a tight fitting lid or a cover to keep all the ingredients in a moist environment and all of them use an indirect heat like an oven compared to direct heat applied from fire or a stovetop so time honored tradition there um, and here's here's a quote let me get, give you this quote from a book it's called slow cookers for dummies for generations women in small towns throughout Europe have been using the town bread bakers cooling ovens to slow cook their family meals for a small price the baker rented oven space to anyone who wanted to slow cook a joint of meat or fish the food was left in the oven unattended and picked up in the early afternoon for dinner although the practice of slow cooking in a wood-burning oven was also common practice in the United States during the 1800s it died out with the introduction of cast iron stoves so that was again from the book slow cookers for dummies <clears throat> just as with any other food preparation technique um, flops can happen with a slow cooker and it isn't easy to use a appliance but it does take a little bit more thought than just dumping in the ingredients and flipping the on switch and just as with any cooking method it's important to know how the appliance functions at its best so with a little knowledge you will experience many more successes than mishaps also the more you learn about how to operate the slow cooker the easier it will be for you to create new or adapt old family recipes to this nourishing time-saving method of preparing nutritious food let's get on to the actual topic seven tips for using a traditional slow cooker now the first thing is why well because it's practical let me give you a real quick short list of why it's practical you save time in the kitchen the meal is portable and perfect for things like buffets and potlucks you save money on electricity in the summer lower heat production is a great boon in your kitchen it's it's safe to leave it unattended at home while you work shop or chauffeur the family here and there you can use up tougher cuts of meat that you got with that great 
quarter cow or half pig or a whole lamb package deal that you got. Um, that comes with all kinds of cuts of meat. Your oven is going to be free for other tasks. You can save yourself from cleaning an additional serving dish because you have that removable pot that you can use. You also get nutritious broth from the meat and bones and it produces collagens, gelatins, and it enhances the flavor of the dish. So all of those are really practical reasons why you would use the slow cooker. Now, which settings would you use and when? Now, the setting on most liquor, <laughs> slow cookers includes off, low, and high. Some have more than that, but that's your basics, off, low, and high. Most slow cooker recipes are geared to the low setting, and that is uh, about 180 to 200 degrees. That is, it's a gentle simmer. The high setting hovers between 280 to 300 degrees, and it cooks food two to two and a half times faster than when on low. So when you're cooking on high, you kind of half the amount of time that you would normally do it if it was on high. Now, another option that people do sometimes is they start a dish out on high for about an hour to get a jump start on heating the container, and then they can turn it back down to low for the remainder of the time. So you can save yourself an hour by, by doing that. Um, it's also especially useful when you're cooking large cuts of meat or whole chickens. So you can get it up to temperature quickly. And the keep warm setting is a great way to maximize the usefulness of this appliance. Once it's been thoroughly cooked, that setting prevents further cooking or drying out. And it'll keep your food ready to eat for at least two hours. So you can, if you're away from home for more than the eight hours of the slow cook, you get an extra couple of hours with that warming. Now, how long does it really take to cook? Besides the chosen setting, high or low, some other factors that can influence the speed that your dish is going to cook are the liquid and fat content of the dish, the temperature of the food, the temperature of the container, and these, this has to do with whether you left it in the fridge with pre-prepared ingredients the night before. That's something you can do is fix it the night before and then all you got to do is stick it in there and turn the thing on. Altitude will affect time, the size of the pieces of food, and, of course, your specific brand of slow cooker. All of those things are going to affect how long it takes. In general, around eight hours for the low setting, four to six hours for the high setting. Now, how much food is too much? For the best outcome, you should have your, your slow cooker half to three quarters full. If you fill it less than half, it's more likely to result in overcooked or burned food. I don't, I've never burned anything, but I have definitely overcooked stuff when I didn't have enough um, in there. And then an overfilled container, it might not cook thoroughly in the allotted time, or it, it might not get hot enough to actually inhibit the bacteria growth, which is it's got to reach 140 degrees in under four hours. Then also you can have spillage outside the container, ooh, messy, um, as the food kind of warms up and expands, it can, it can spill over the sides and, oh, we don't want that kind of mess. So half, at least up to three quarters full. Now, do you still have to brown or saute? Just right up front, this is optional. Um, some slow cooker recipes require nothing more than chopping up the ingredients and there are others that may taste better with a, a, a touch of prep. But my experience is you could, even if it calls for, for browning uh, or sauteing something, you can get by without it if you're in a real, in a real hurry. So your slow cooker don't, cookers do not reach browning temperatures. Um, so browning large cuts of meat or sauteing or softening vegetables, especially like onions and garlic, outside the slow cooker in a separate skillet is an option and it's going to impart more depth of flavor to a dish. Again, you know, if you're in a hurry, you can throw it all in there, but if you've got the time, you might want to saute your onions and garlic. Uh, 
and you can do the browning of your meat if you want to because uh now ground meat browning ground meat usually is going to result in an improved color in the final product and texture but again it's not absolutely necessary and browning is not recommended for meatloaf and similar dishes that you might you know molded kind of dishes that you might do in your crock pot um of course the downside if you are browning it kind of takes away from the slow and low concept that uh i talked about a little bit earlier and uh, but there may be occasions when browning is the best way to go just for sheer taste and tenderness so the bottom line is browning meats and sauteing or softening vegetables are unnecessary you experiment see what you and your family's taste buds prefer next tip which foods and when so with a few exceptions most of the ingredients for your slow cooker dish can be put in all at the same time and still end up evenly cooked but um, let me talk about a few brief guidelines some things that don't fall within those parameters uh, although it seems counterintuitive most vegetables especially roots such as potatoes carrots and turnips actually cook more slowly than meat and poultry in the slow cooker um, they do best when they're layered along the bottom underneath the meat or other ingredients or along the sides of the container you're getting them closest to the source of heat and then you have uh, faster cooking veggies like peas and greens you can add those 20 to 30 minutes before the dish is finished cooking so you don't have to put those in at the very beginning you can but sometimes they'll hold their shape better if you put them in just in the last 20 or 30 minutes. Now, poultry, poultry, poultry is pretty easy to overcook um, and and uh, dry it out. So y you want to leave the skin on for sure, and that's going to lock in the, more of the moisture and add flavor. Beans and legumes. Um, now these these dried foods are perfectly suited for the slow cooker be sure to properly prepare them beforehand i.e soaking don't add salt until after they are cooked as salt will actually keep the skins tough dairy milk cream sour cream and yogurt can tend to curdle with long simmering cheese can break down and separate and so you end up with this clumpy stuff with this fat floating on the surface so it's best to leave these foods on the table to get the most from their enzymes and their life live culture so all of your dairy milk cream sour cream yogurt put that on the table you're adding it on top or you're mixing it in right at the end seafood uh foods from the sea also tend to cook fast and so they can tend not to fare well with long cooking times of a slow cooker so again you can add them during the last 30 to 60 minutes of cooking so all of the stuff that's going to go with your seafood is in the slow cooker and then right at the end 30 to 60 minutes toss in your seafood herbs and spices are interesting whole herbs and spices release their flavors slowly while the ground versions tend to lose their flavor or even become bitter tasting in a slow cooker uh, so things like whole cloves instead of ground cloves peppercorns instead of ground pepper and so on you've got the um, leaves crushed leaves instead of powdered like marjoram or basil or well i guess basil's not really powdered but some of some of these herbs that come in powdered form you can get them in their leaf form chopped fresh herbs those you're going to add just during the last half hour of cooking otherwise you're just cooking those to death so just drop them in right during the last uh, half hour even while you turn it off and just let it cool down while you're getting the rest of dinner together you can put those fresh herbs in there all right converting recipes this is our last tip the easiest way to adapt like a traditional recipe for the slow cooker find a similar slow cooker recipe and use it as a guide so you've got your traditional beef stew or whatever that you're you're 
would normally make on top of the stove. Use that as a guide and then kind of compare it to slow cooker recipes and, and use your ingredients along with the, the, the method of actually putting it together that you'll find in a slow cooker recipe. Any kind of traditional recipe that includes some moisture and requires a longer cooking time, like 45 minutes to an hour in the oven or on the stovetop, those are all good candidates for con converting to a slow cooker since they'll most likely finish cooking within eight hours on low in the slow cooker. Uh, in fact, most uncooked meat and veggie combos will take approximately eight hours because the enclosed environment of the slow cooker discourages the e evaporation and it generates liquid. Um, you're going to end up with really only needing about half the liquid that you would for most other recipes that you would cook on the stovetop or in the oven. Um, that, now that doesn't apply to soup, sauces, chilies, or chowders. You're still going to need pretty much the same amount of liquid on those. All right. There you go. Let me talk. The last word here. Make every effort to obtain the highest quality meats and poultry. Right? It's, it's going to be safer. It's more nutritious. It's tastier. And the slow cooker brings out the best in these foods. Um, any kind of worry or anxiety about reaching certain internal temperatures is less of a concern with these truly healthy foods. So start taking advantage of this fast food technique today. All you need is a high quality slow cooker. And yes, that includes your multi-function pressure cooker. And while I have one, I still use my traditional slow cooker. It frees me up to use my Kosori multi-function gadget separately. I might need some boiled eggs that come out of the shell effortlessly. Or I might make some lovely yogurt at the same time. My slow cooker is making some fantastic barbecued beef. And that brings us to today's recipe. This easy barbecue beef recipe takes advantage of your traditional slow cooker. It's great for any kind of cookout or potluck dinner. You're going to use chuck roast, which makes delicious shredded, shredded beef sandwiches. And uh, all, another note, the recipe calls for ketchup, but you can substitute tomato paste for a slightly less sweet dish. Um, in any case, it is sure to please your family. So you're going to start with a three pound boneless grass fed chuck roast. Um, a cup and a half of ketchup, or you can use the tomato paste, two tablespoons of Dijon style mustard, quarter cup of red wine vinegar, two tablespoons Worcestershire sauce, half teaspoon of salt, quarter teaspoon of pepper, one clove of garlic diced. Put it in your, put the chuck roast in your slow cooker, combine all the rest of the stuff in a mixing bowl, bowl to kind of make that sauce. Pour it over the chuck roast. Then you're going to cover it and cook it on low 8 to 10 hours or 4 to 5 hours if you do high. Then you're going to remove that roast from the slow cooker and shred the meat with a fork. Put the shredded meat back into the slow cooker and stir it to evenly coat it with the sauce. And then serve it alone or on a whole grain sandwich bun. Uh, put uh, additional barbecue sauce on if it is desired. That's it. Oh, if you like your meat a little bit sweeter, you can add a tablespoon or two of something like date sugar uh, while it's still hot. So you can allow that to dissolve into the barbecue sauce. All right. Final thoughts. That is it for today's podcast. I hope you enjoyed our homestead updates. We love sharing our life with you. I just, you just can't know how much we appreciate you coming along and being here with us. Uh, so traditional cooking from scratch doesn't have to be hard or time consuming. Fire up that Instapot or dig out your old faithful slow cooker and give that barbecued beef recipe a try. If you enjoyed this podcast, please hop over to Apple Podcasts and subscribe. Give me a five star rating and review that when we get reviews, it causes Apple to rate us a little bit higher in their search results. And the absolute best thing that you can do to help out the show is is to share it with any family or friends who might be interested in our content. As always, I'm here to help you taste the traditional touch. And thank you so much for stopping by the homestead. And until next time, may God fill your life with grace 
and peace.